です。Today we are going to talk about few topics uh, in relation to the diabetes. Uh, one of the frequently asked question is uh, is diabetes type one hereditary? Uh, actually, there is only a, a small risk. Type one diabetes is due to some autoimmune dysregulation where uh, antibodies are produced against our own uh, beta cells in the pancreas that leads to destruction and insulin deficiency. So lack of insulin causes uh, uh, significant high sugars, and this happens usually in a very young age, uh, and also referred to as juvenile diabetes. So it is very important to recognize uh, the symptoms as it can cause significant complications uh, if not detected, and uh, and can lead to complications such as diabetic ketoacidosis, which can be very serious. So uh, awareness of management of uh, type 1 diabetes and its complications is quite important. Uh, all the one like type 2 diabetes bears a significant uh, uh, risk in the uh, family of uh, getting type 2 diabetes. Type 1 works uh, in a different way uh, and we have to uh, <coughs> manage uh, patients in a different way from type 2 diabetes in terms of these patients do not respond to oral medication and uh, usually uh, I need uh, insulin on a long, lifelong basis and these patients can develop the complications if sugars are not controlled. Let's talk about diabetes emergencies. Uh, as we know, diabetes is a very chronic problem. It's a lifelong disease. Uh, unfortunately, however, uh, diabetes is not uh, properly managed. It can lead to acute emergency situations. Uh, I think, first of all, uh, if the sugars are not under control, the sugars can become very high, and which can lead to various metabolic disturbances. Uh, the patients can develop what we call as a hyperosmolar non ketotic state where the sugars become very high and lead to metabolic derangements and this can lead to serious complications uh, and is uh, treated in a hospital setting with the needing of the insulin and fluids. Uh, sugar not being controlled uh, can also lead to uh, <coughs> other problems such as diabetic ketoacidosis. This happens in patients who lack insulin, and especially type 1 diabetics, but it can also happen in type 2 diabetics. This is a very uh, critical situation where uh, bad uh, products like ketones develop in the blood and which can cause a lead to various complications and even at death uh, at times if not taken care of properly. Uh, the main reason for this is not uh, taking insulin properly uh, or missing their insulin or intercurrent illness like fever and other problems. Uh, to prevent this serious complication, patients need to check their sugars regularly and adjust their insulin and if they are unwell with fever or any complications, they need to see their doctor and take immediate attention. Today we talk about uh, diabetes and pregnancy. Uh, type 1 and type 2 patients uh, can uh, have a normal pregnancy, although it's very important that these patients uh, are very well controlled with uh, proper medications like insulin and control of the sugars is good for both the good uh, outcomes of both baby and the mother. Uh, I think patients who does not have uh, diabetes prior to pregnancy can develop diabetes in pregnancy, that's called gestational diabetes. Gestational diabetes is quite important both for the health of the mother and the baby because this can affect uh, mother's health and uh, baby's health. If the sugars are high, the baby can become bigger and leads to a large fatigue babies leading to shoulder dystocia and other complications during delivery. So uh, gestational diabetes should be uh, identified and uh, usually a glucose tolerance test is done to identify this uh, gestational diabetes and is managed with lifestyle measures with diet and activity and also we have been using lately medications such as metformin to control but insulin remains the standard uh, treatment for gestational diabetes. Usually uh, the sugars are controlled, it should not lead to significant concerns. The doctor will monitor both the baby and the mother and uh, guide the uh, <coughs> process of in sugar control.
about medical adherence in diabetes. Uh, as we know, diabetes is a very long-term problem with uh, both acute and chronic complications. If the sugars are not controlled in the long run, it can lead to various complications such as diabetic retinopathy, that's your eyes being affected, diabetic uh, nephropathy, which your kidneys are affected, uh, and also neuropathy, among other various complications. So it's very important that the sugars are controlled well, and for, the, for this, the key remains that you have you adhere to your treatment. Uh, adherence is very important, and it's a very significant problem we do see uh, in our clinical settings. A patient sometimes unable to take tablets for various reasons, including. Uh, uh, inertia to use the medication and uh, non availability of the medication and non compliant to treatment, unable to keep up the follow up due to various social factors. And sometimes patients do develop some intolerance to uh, oral medication or hypoglycemia to oral and uh, medication in insulin. And once the hypoglycemia develops, patients are reluctant to restart their medication. So it's very important uh, for proper education of a patient uh, in relation to the adherence of the treatment. They need to be explained very clearly and give guidance how to take the tablets regularly, like maintaining a pill, a pill container or a calendar to remind them of taking medications regularly and also appropriate storage of medicine like insulin is also very important. Uh, and then a regular follow-up of these patients and uh, looking into their data is talk about dietary modification and diabetes. Uh, diet is an important part of uh, diabetes management. Lifestyle measures including diet and activity remain cornerstone of the treatment throughout their life. Um, I think diet is individualized but I think the basic concept will be to reduce uh, sugars uh, and uh, saturated fats uh, and more uh, encouraged to take more of uh, uh, whole grain cereals, vegetables, fruits, which uh, which provides micro and macronutrients. Uh, so there's no particular food which is uh, should be strictly uh, avoided. But as I said, uh, the sugars and uh, saturated fats content should be very uh, monitored. So I think a proper uh, review by a dietitian or a nutritionist uh, and uh, developing a char food chart according to their local taste and individual uh, preferences should be done ideally and uh, a constant review should be maintained and encouraged to maintain a healthy dietary pattern is quite important. Uh, usually we can also do a carb counting if the patients are taking insulin which is calculating the carbohydrate portions in the food and matching their uh, insulin. I think there are a few uh, uh, protocols and methodologies are available in there and nutritionists should be able to guide. I think there is no particular diet uh, which is uh, individualized but I think uh, all the other diets which we are hearing about keto diet and low fat, uh, zero fat diet and all those things uh, uh, have to be monitored in